Joseph Hilaire Pierre René Bellic was an Anglo French writer and historian. He was one of the most prolific writers in England during the early 20th century. He was known as a writer, orator, poet, sailor, satirist, man of letters, soldier, and political activist. His Catholic faith had a strong impact on his works. He was president of the Oxford Union and later MP for Salford from 1906 to 1910. He was a noted disputant, with a number of long-running feuds but also widely regarded as a humane and sympathetic man. Belloc became a naturalised British subject in 1902, while retaining his French citizenship. His poetry encompassed comic verses for children and religious poetry. His widely sold cautionary tales for children included Jim, who ran away from his nurse and was eaten by a lion, and Matilda, who told lies and was burnt to death. He also collaborated with G. K. Chesterton on a number of works, family and career. Belloc was born in La Salle saint cloud France to a French father and an English mother. He grew up in England where much of his boyhood was spent in Slindon, West Sussex, for which he often felt homesick in later life. This is evidenced in poems such as West Sussex Drinking Song, The South Country, and even the more melancholy Harnacker Mill. His mother Elizabeth Rayner Parks was also a writer and a great-granddaughter of the English chemist Joseph Priestley. She was a major force in efforts to gain greater equality for women, being a co-founder of the English Women's Journal and the Langham Place Group. In 1867, she married attorney Louis Belloc, son of the French painter John Hilaire Belloc. In 1872, five years after they wed, Louis died, but not before being wiped out financially in a stock market crash. The young widow then brought her son Hilaire, along with his sister, Marie, back to England, where Hilaire remained, except for his voluntary enlistment as a young man in the French artillery. After being educated at John Henry Newman's Oratory School in Edgbaston, Birmingham, Belloc served his term of military service as a French citizen with an artillery regiment near Toul in 1891. After his military service, Belloc proceeded to Balliol College, Oxford, as a history scholar. He went on to obtain first-class honours in history, and never lost his love for Balliol, as is illustrated by his verse, Balliol made me, Balliol fed me, whatever I had she gave me again. He was powerfully built, with great stamina, and walked extensively in Britain and Europe, while courting his future wife Elodie, whom he first met in 1890. The impecunious Belloc walked a good part of the way from the Midwest of the United States to her home in Northern California, paying for lodging at remote farmhouses and ranches by sketching the owners and reciting poetry. He was the brother of the novelist Marie Adelaide Belloc Lowndes. In 1896, he married Elodie Hogan, an American. In 1906, he purchased land and a house called King's Land at Shipley, West Sussex, where he brought up his family and lived until shortly before his death. Elodie and Belloc had five children before her 1914 death from influenza. After her death, Belloc wore mourning for the remainder of his life, keeping her room exactly as she had left it. His son Louis was killed in 1918 while serving in the Royal Flying Corps in northern France. Belloc placed a memorial tablet of the nearby Cambrai Cathedral. It is in the same side chapel as the noted icon Our Lady of Cambrai. Belloc suffered a stroke in 1941 and never recovered from its effects. He died on 16 July 1953 at Mount Alvernia Nursing Home in Guildford, Surrey from burns and shock following a fall he had while placing a log into a fireplace at King's Land. He is buried at the Shrine of Our Lady of Consolation of West Grinstead, where he had regularly attended Mass as a parishioner. At his funeral Mass, homilist Monsignor Ronald Knox observed, No man of his time fought so hard for the good things. Recent biographies of Belloc have been written by A. N. Wilson and Joseph Pierce, and Jesuit political philosopher James Shalls remembering Belloc was published by St. Augustine Press in September 2013. Burial Site 
Family plot. Typo on inscription. Plaque commemorating his parish service. Political career An 1895 graduate of Balliol College, Oxford, Bellick was a noted figure within the university, being president of the Oxford Union, the undergraduate debating society. He went into politics after he became a naturalized British subject. A great disappointment in his life was his failure to gain a fellowship of All Souls College, Oxford in 1895. This failure may have been caused in part by his producing a small statue of the Virgin and placing it before him on the table during the interview for the fellowship. From 1906 to 1910 he was a Liberal Party member of Parliament for Salford South. During one campaign speech he was asked by a heckler if he was a papist. Retrieving his rosary from his pocket he responded, Sir, so far as possible I hear mass each day and I go to my knees and tell these beads each night. If that offends you, then I pray God may spare me the indignity of representing you in Parliament. The crowd cheered and Bellic won the election. His only period of steady employment was from 1914 to 1920 as editor of Land and Water, a journal devoted to the progress of the war. Otherwise he lived by his writing and was often impecunious. In controversy and debate Bellick first came to public attention shortly after arriving at Balliol College, Oxford as a recent French Army veteran. Attending his first debate of the Oxford Union Debating Society, he saw that the affirmative position was wretchedly and half-heartedly defended. As the debate drew to its conclusion and the division of the House was called, he rose from his seat in the audience and delivered a vigorous impromptu defense of the proposition. Bellick won that debate from the audience, as the division of the House then showed, and his reputation as a debater was established. He was later elected president of the Union. He held his own in debates there with F. E. Smith and John Buchan, the latter a friend. He was at his most effective in the 1920s, on the attack against H. G. Wells' The Outline of History, in which he criticized Wells' secular bias in his belief in evolution by means of natural selection, a theory that Bellick asserted had been completely discredited. Wells remarks that, debating Mr. Bellick is like arguing with a hailstorm. Bellick's review of Outline of History famously observed that Wells' book was a powerful and well-written volume, up until the appearance of man. That is, somewhere around page 7, Wells responded with a small book, Mr. Bellick objects. Not to be outdone, Bellick followed with Mr. Bellick still objects. G. G. Coulton, a keen and persistent opponent, wrote on Misty, Bellick on medieval history in a 1920 article. After a long simmering feud, Bellick replied with a booklet, The Case of Dr. Coulton, in 1938. His style during later life fulfilled the nickname he received in childhood, Old Thunder. Bellick's friend, Lord Sheffield, described his provocative personality in a preface to The Cruise of the Nona. In Bellick's novel of travel, The Four Men, the title characters supposedly represent different facets of the author's personality. One of the four improvises a playful song at Christmas time, which includes the verse, May all good fellows that here agree drink ordered ale in heaven with me, and may all my enemies go to hell. No, 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 may all my enemies go to hell. No, no, the other characters regard the verse as fairly gauche and ill-conceived, so while part of Bellick may have agreed with this song, it is not necessarily representative of Bellick's personality as a whole. Hobbies during his later years, he would sail when he could afford to do so and became a well-known yachtsman. He won many races and was on the French sailing team. In the early 1930s, he was given an old Jersey pilot cutter, called Jersey. He sailed this for some years around the coasts of England, with the help of younger men. One of them, Dermot McCarthy, wrote a book about his time on the water with Bellock, called Sailing with Mr. Bellock, writing. Bellock wrote on myriad subjects, from warfare to poetry to the many current topics of his day. 
He has been called one of the big four of Edwardian letters, along with H. G. Wells, George Bernard Shaw, and G. K. Chesterton, all of whom debated with each other into the 1930s. Bellock was closely associated with Chesterton, and Shaw coined the term Chester Bellock for their partnership. He was co-editor with Cecil Chesterton of the literary periodical The Eyewitness, published until 1912 by Charles Granville Stephen Swift Ltd. The paper was later called The New Witness, and still later, Kay's Weekly. Asked once why he wrote so much, he responded, because my children are howling for pearls and caviar, Bellock observed that the first job of letters is to get a canon, that is, to identify those works which a writer looks upon as exemplary of the best of prose and verse. For his own prose style, he claimed to aspire to be as clear and concise as Mary Had a Little Lamb, essays and travel writing his best travel writing has secured a permanent following. The Path to Rome, an account of a walking pilgrimage he made from central France across the Alps and down to Rome, has remained continuously in print. More than a mere travelogue, The Path to Rome contains descriptions of the people and places he encountered, his drawings in pencil and in ink of the route, humor, poesy, and the reflections of a large mind turn to the events of his time as he marches along his solitary way. His book The Pyrenees, published in 1909, shows a depth of detailed knowledge of that region such as would only be gained from personal experience. At every turn, Bellick shows himself to be profoundly in love with Europe and with the faith that he claims has produced it. As an essayist he was one of a small, admired and dominant group of popular writers. Poetry his cautionary tales for children, humorous poems with an implausible moral, illustrated by Basil Temple Blackwood and later by Edward Gorey, are the most widely known of his writings. Supposedly for children, they, like Lewis Carroll's works, are more to adult and satirical tastes. Henry King, who chewed bits of string and was early cut off in dreadful agonies, a similar poem tells the story of Rebecca, who slammed doors for fun and perished miserably. Another one of his famous poems was Matilda, the story of a young girl who died because of her own lies. The tale of Matilda who told lies and was burnt to death was adapted into the play Matilda Liar, by Debbie Isett. Quentin Blake, the illustrator, described Bellick as at one and the same time the overbearing adult and mischievous child. Roald Dahl was a follower, but Bellick has broader if sourer scope. For example, with Lord Lundy, it happened to Lord Lundy then as happens to so many men about the age of 26 they shoved him into politics. Leading up to, we had intended you to be the next Prime Minister but three. Instead, Lundy is condemned to the ultimate political wilderness. The stocks were sold, the press was squared, the middle class was quite prepared. But as it is, my language fails. Go out and govern New South Wales, the aged patriot groaned and died. Ungracious. How Lord Lundy cried, of more way to Bellick's sonnets and verses, a volume that deploys the same singing and rhyming techniques of his children's verses. Bellick's poetry is often religious, often romantic. Throughout the path to Rome he writes in spontaneous song. History, politics, economics three of his best-known non-fiction works are the servile state, Europe and faith and the Jews. From an early age Belloc knew Cardinal Henry Edward Manning, who was responsible for the conversion of his mother to Roman Catholicism. In the cruise of the Nona, he mentions a profound thing that Manning said to him when he was just 20 years old. All human conflict is ultimately theological. What Manning meant, Belloc explains, is that all wars and revolutions and all decisive struggles between parties of men arise from a difference in moral and transcendental doctrine. Belloc adds that he never met any man arguing for what should be among men, but took for granted as he argued that the doctrine he consciously or unconsciously accepted was or should be a similar foundation for all mankind. Hence battle, Manning's involvement in the 1889 London dock strike made a major impression on Bellick and his view of politics. According to biographer Robert Speight, 
He became a trenchant critic both of capitalism and of many aspects of socialism. With others Berlick had envisioned the socio-economic system of distributism. In the servile state, written after his party political career had come to an end, and other works, he criticized the modern economic order and parliamentary system, advocating distributism in opposition to both capitalism and socialism. Belloc made the historical argument that distributism was not a fresh perspective or program of economics but rather a proposed return to the economics that prevailed in Europe for the thousand years when it was Catholic. He called for the dissolution of Parliament and its replacement with committees of representatives for the various sectors of society, an idea that was also popular among fascists under the name of corporatism. But original corporatism, sometimes called paleo-corporatism, was a system that predates capitalism and fascism. Paleo-corporatism was based around the guilds of the Middle Ages and served to appoint legislators. Neo-corporatism is a fascist system that merges the state with the capitalistic corporations and the corporations then are directed by the state, under nominal private ownership. The owners are thus effectively disappropriated, and become mere managers in the service of the state, and those who control it. Bellic's views fit medieval paleo-corporatism rather than neo-corporatist fascism. With these linked themes in the background, he wrote a long series of contentious biographies of historical figures, including Oliver Cromwell, James II, and Napoleon. They show him as an ardent proponent of Orthodox Catholicism and a critic of many elements of the modern world. Outside academe, Belloc was impatient with what he considered to be axe-grinding histories especially what he called official history. Joseph Pierce notes also Belloc's attack on the secularism of H. G. Wells' popular outline of history. Belloc objected to his adversary's tacitly anti-Christian stance, epitomized by the fact that Wells had devoted more space in his history to the Persian campaign against the Greeks than he had given to the figure of Christ. He wrote also substantial amounts of military history. In alternative history, he contributed to the 1931 collection If It Had Happened Otherwise edited by Sir John Squire, reprints Ignatius Press of California and IHS Press of Virginia have reissued Belloc. Tanned Books of Charlotte, North Carolina, publishes a number of Bellick's works, particularly his historical writings.